Okay, folks, uh, let's go ahead and continue our design. In this lesson, we're going to be uh, creating our uh, basically the elements for the first dynamic simulation that we're going to have. If you take a look at the design here, uh, it basically has two dynamic simulation, the elements that filling up this bag and uh, the other spheres and cubes that are actually kind of uh, roaming around the room. So if you take a look, you can see, even though there are different parts, they kind of interact with each other a bit. Now, what we're going to be doing in this lesson is to design and model the uh, spheres. This the sphere basically there is. You don't need to model, but we're going to be creating this uh, uh, cubical shapes and also the materials that uh, I used uh, for them. As you can see, really nice shiny materials. We're going to be doing this in this uh, lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for that, I'm going to create a new scene really quickly so I need a sphere that's gonna be something like maybe seven centimeters I'm gonna duplicate that control drag and that's gonna be it and uh, for the cube let's create a cube and uh, I'm going to something like uh, maybe 15 centimeters for the moment it's s so uh, yeah select the cube hit s I'm just going to move it a bit okay so we just have them separated uh, now let's uh, really quickly go ahead and design this uh, cubical shape that we had select the cube I'm gonna hit C hit NB to go to the growth shading lines and let's uh, go ahead select the edges uh, hit uh, UB to go to your uh, basically what they call it the ring selection okay now click on here and hit MF to use your edge cut. Go to two subdivision, uh, turn off create end guns, and let's scale it to something like 250 and see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna apply, and actually that's not too bad. I'm gonna maybe go to something like 260. Okay, mm, yeah, 250 was enough. So that's it. Let's go ahead and uh, again hit UB, select this guy. MF it remembers the last settings so apply really quickly UB and again MF apply that and I think we are basically done now having that then I'm gonna just go there and select this uh, polys uh, that we wanted to kind of delete I'm gonna select all of them and let's go ahead to maybe this front view hit s I'm gonna right click hit extrude and uh, are we doing it right or not let's go ahead and basically extrude them I'm gonna go here I want to just align them so let's see what we need to do to make sure it's perfectly aligned so I'm holding down alt while clicking on this arrows so there we go uh, negative 1.25 now if you uh, go out there sorry you just uh, Come on. Now you can simply delete those polys. And as you can see, we are basically done. And we have this cubical shape. I know there are, might be there might be other methods to do that, but I think this is just a bit easier and gives you a bit more control. Now let's go ahead and select all the edges. Uh, before that, let me actually make sure I have everything optimized. So and I'll so select the polys, and even though you don't have to select anything and it still optimizes it now let me go ahead and go to my edges Control a to select all of them select the bevel tool by right clicking and then selecting the bevel tool and now let's go ahead and have something really minor adjustment at a few subdivisions and uh, yeah I think we are done and the bevel tool inside cinema 40 is so powerful so you can see how clean it is and uh, yep 
I think this is what we need and the next thing is to create the materials. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna create a new material. Open up the material. I'm gonna be using uh, this color here. Uh, there we go. 1194296. And let's uh, go ahead and enable the luminance channel. The same color, but uh, something like maybe 20%. Enable transparency. Again, the same color, so it kinda has that translucent look. And enable reflection. I'm gonna use a uh, old uh, useful Fresnel and uh, go to I'm not actually not gonna change anything because it basically works the way it should be uh, and let's go ahead I'm just going to reduce the amount of reflection in the main brightness area and mixed strengths will be reduced to something like 20 percent as you can see okay so it's something like maybe 20 is enough here and now for the specular, I just want to make it much more narrower and also the fall off and some inner wrist so we have a bit hotter point in the middle and the fall off is too much. Okay, now that's not too bad. I'm going to create the second material based on this one. Uh, that's going to be those uh, white bands. So for the colors, I'm just going to change this to a gradient, go to gradient, change the type, uh, the interpolation basically to none, select this knot and change the position to 50%. And uh, for the first color, we're going to be using this color and for the second color, uh, that white color, change the type to 2D V and just right click and double knots for uh, maybe Let's see how that's gonna look. And let's go ahead to our luminance. I'm just going to create the same gradient. And um, basically that's gonna be our luminance channel. So we're not gonna be changing the colors at all. Okay, 2DV and double knots twice. There we go. Now that white parts will be more kind of luminance. Uh, now later on I will be kind of hooking up this mixed strength with the uh, turbulence that we'll be adding to our dynamic system so as the uh, spheres goes quickly uh, and gets uh, basically you know uh, crazily moving around uh, that uh, should be for example turned on and when they are uh, settled that should be you know turned off so you can uh, uh, animate them we're gonna be using Expresso really quick uh, to do that and that's about it let's go to something like maybe 10 11 person for the moment we have the transparency the same thing we don't need to change it the reflection is good and the specular will be yeah, yeah that's that's gonna be enough and the material that I have in mind for this cubicle shape is simply a chrome uh, blurry shape so uh, for a lot of metals you need to really darken up the diffuse color and for the reflection at uh, the same color just adding a bit of blurriness 20% and we have to actually add the quality later on now the specular thing is gonna be just um, quite similar to what we had before now this is the material let's go just quickly apply them this is our cube uh, let's go there. This is going to be our first sphere and our second sphere. And uh, we might need to actually add a bit more nuts in here so it looks nicer, but uh, we'll see how it works in our scene. So let me just uh, uh, select all of these guys and hit Alt and G. And uh, let's go see elements for our first cloner or whatever you name it and let's uh, go ahead edit copy uh, hit V go to your project and let's select this project here and uh, you can now hit edit paste now we have those elements in our scene and uh, in the next lesson we'll be setting up our First dynamic simulation, adding different effectors, adding different 
uh, forces to finally get it uh, somewhere but it's not going to be final because when it's basically done somehow we have to uh, kind of combine it with our next dynamic simulation and uh, you know see how they works together and if needs be we have to finally you know adjust them so in this lesson we uh, modeled and created the material for our elements that we're, we're going to be using in the next lesson for our first dynamic simulation in the next lesson we are going to be actually setting up our dynamic simulation so uh, I'll see you next lesson